here. This is Marcieva Worrell, your local Close to My Heart consultant. Today I'm going to walk you through how to use Cricut Design Space on your iPhone. So we're going to start off. We open it up in the app and I am currently just resizing a square basic shape. That is going to be my background paper and you'll see I simply click um, edit to change it to 12 by 12 and then I simply can go in and make the colors different or sizing different if I choose to change the colors I want to click the button that says layers I'm going to click on that little arrow there to the right and then the colors will pop up I'm going to change it and I typically will start with a dark color in the background but not always so today I decide I'm going to go with that sort of lavender color and now, of course, I need a layer. I need a new square to go on top of it. So I'm going to pop back open those basic shapes again. And this time, I'm going to resize it to 11.5. Now, you don't have to use 11.5. That's what I enjoy using. And in all honesty, when I go to cut this on the Cricut, I'm not going to cut 12 by 12, obviously, or really the 11 and a half by 5. I am going to just simply trim that with my paper trimmer. But for the purposes of having background uh, space to be able to set up my page layouts, I usually will put them on there. So of course I can change that color again using the layers tab and this time I'm going to go through a couple of different colors trying to really decide what I want there and it won't necessarily stay that color when I go to cut it out in fact I may actually use print uh, pattern paper instead so for this one I, I kind of go through a couple of colors and decide on what I like and you'll find I like a lot of teal and a lot of blue and green and so now I want to start adding other items so I'm going to go in I'm going to pull up that basic shape again but this time I'm going to resize it. And when I go to resize it, I want to resize it to um, typically a four by four. Now it certainly doesn't have to be. You can obviously do six and a half by four or six by fours or six and a half by four or six and a quarter by four and a quarter. But I am gonna make this particular layout with photos that are size four by four roughly. So to do that, I just simply went into that edit button again. I changed the sizing and now I'm changing the colors and you'll find the color palette is a little different when you're in the app as opposed to being on the computer. So I'm gonna try to make that sort of a gray background and then I'm gonna pull up another square to make the matting. So you'll see that the actual gray one is four by four. So I will make the matting that's gonna go on top of it just slightly smaller and we're gonna make it 3.75 or I could make it 3.25 or I could make it 3.5. You know, I can kind of switch it up. Um, you'll see it actually goes to 3.8 and then I'll change that color to white. Now I typically print my photos here at home and I print them with that white border. So the white paper here for me is just a placeholder truly for the photo. Um, but you certainly could mat it with real white cardstock as well for your photo. Now, the key here is I'm going to group these and to group it, I'm simply gonna to go to Actions and once I go to that Actions tab, I'm gonna scroll over to Group. I'm gonna um, highlight both shapes and you'll see they stick together now. Well, now I can go over to Duplicate and make as many as I need. For this particular one, I'm just gonna go with three photos perhaps. And so you'll see I now have one, two, and three. So now that I have three, I wanna start deciding what types of embellishments I wanna to add to the page. And when you're adding embellishments, you know, you have a couple of options. So I'm gonna go back into my images. I click my images tab. Now, I know I wanna use my close to my heart cartridge. If I just type in the word close in the search at the top up there for close, it's gonna give me close actual images, not my cartridges. So you'll see, I have two images that just say close and one that actually says close to my heart. So instead, I'm gonna click on the cartridges tab. Now I'm gonna type in close for cartridges. And now you'll see my various close to my heart cartridges pop up. So I'm going to use art booking for this particular one. You'll see I'm just sort of scrolling here and I'm gonna go with art booking. Simply click it and it will pull up all of the art booking available images. So I'm gonna scroll through and kind of decide what I want. Now I love art booking because it has so many different overlays and different sayings and phrases and little like cute little embellishments. And one thing I'll show 
Um, in an upcoming video is how to use contour to your benefit. I love using contour. There are so many things you can do with it. Um, so even if a picture is not quite or an image is not quite what you want and perhaps it has holes in it or it has slices that you don't want, you can always close them up with the contour button. So you'll see I've selected a couple of images. I've selected my phrase, ice cream and cake. Um, and now I'm looking for things that I can put in the background for layers on my layout. So I'm going to end up going here with a couple of different ones. Um, you'll see I have that sunshine banner. I already have the cake and ice cream. I have uh, a couple of sort of rectangle shapes that are nice and cute. So now we're going to insert them and pull them on over. Now they look very small. Keep in mind we're going to resize them. So let me just slide my little photo mats out the way. And I'm going to slide over my sentiment and add in my actual shapes. So now, of course, you see those three holes on the left-hand side of that tab looking square I don't want those holes there now I could find a way to contour them out but for me for this particular one it's actually easier to do something else in a second and I'll show it to you but that sort of uh, mustard color I'm gonna flip it around and I can actually flip it around by using the uh, horizontal flip and it'll flip it over for me so I have the point going the opposite direction. And once I do that, as you can see, I'm gonna place it there. I am actually going to pull it to the front, send to front, and I'm gonna resize it. Now I move these sizing, um, these shapes around quite a bit and resize them several times and that's okay. So now I'm gonna take that little black square and I'm gonna resize it to 1.5 by about 10. Now, the only rhyme or reason in that is I just wanted to make sure it was large enough to fit past my blue piece of paper. So now I'm going to actually slice. Now the purpose of slicing is I wanna get rid of those holes. So all I had to do was go and select both shapes, slice it, and now I'm deleting the pieces I don't need. So now I'm gonna slide it back over. I'm gonna eventually bring that yellow piece, mustard piece to the front again so that it's back on top. I'm gonna to resize it a couple of times and you know just kind of fit everything where I want it to go. Um, and again, there's no rhyme or reason I'm just kind of playing along and I know about where I want my photos to go now <clears throat> excuse me at any point in time you can resize and delete and add back in and of course there is an undo button always know where your undo button is but I'm kind of going through deciding exactly how much space I want around the photos, how much overlap I want, and I'm really just kind of playing with the photo here, um, playing with the photo mat, um, and trying to decide how far over do I want it to go, um, how much do I want to be seen. I definitely want to make sure if I'm putting pattern paper in there that you can see the pattern paper, but I also don't want it to completely take over on the photo. So with each one of these photos, I'm simply, photo mats, I'm simply sending it to the front, um, that way they stay on top and there they are so once I have that where I want it I'm going to put that last one up there um, I decide to start thinking about <clears throat> excuse me where I want to put the other items so I still have that banner and I also still have my cake um, ice cream and cake sentiment um, or title or whatever you want to call it the wording and so I am trying to decide in my mind where I want that to go but first I need to work on this banner so that banner had the word sunshine I don't need sunshine so I'm actually going to go in and I am going to contour so I click the contour button one by one I am clicking each one of these little items out of the sunshine because I need this to be a solid banner now are there other banners on Cricut Design Space oh absolutely but this is one I'm already working with within this cartridge so I can just contour it out and use it as well so now I just need to resize it decide where I want it to go so I'm gonna play with it just a little bit see where if I want it behind in front of and, and exactly which layer in front of and eventually I will actually change the colors as well um, I will have an upcoming video in the future that shows you how to use the color sync um, and you know it's one of those things where you can go in and individually select colors but using color sync is so much easier um, and I use it quite a bit and like I said you know having a video that shows everyone else how to do it is awesome because then those that are not real familiar with that technique or that feature have a chance to to learn and to be able to use it as well so now I have the banner where I want it <clears throat> excuse me and I have to work on where I want that title now now I'm going to resize it a couple of different times I'm going to try to figure out do I want it tall do I want it wide you know and I, of course I got to make it fit on my layout so I'm going to make it fit in the spot that I think it should go of course, I got to bring it to the front, so I'm going to send to the front again. 
And this time, um, I'm deciding I want it to overlap just a tiny bit on that one photo. So once I have it where I want it, I also need to change the color. So I'm going to go back to that layers tab and I'm going to decide on black. I think the black will make the rest of the colors pop. So I kind of go with that. So now while I'm in here, I'm going to change some other colors too. I want to make that banner almost like a strawberry color. Um, that's one of the color combos I like. So I'm going to go through a couple times and I decide on that particular shade of strawberry. And finally, in here I think I want to change that sort of mustard color I want something a little lighter not quite as dark and so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to change that color I'm still in the layers tab I haven't left out of there so I'm able to just kind of go through and decide on what shade yellow I want so now here is my pretty much finished layout um, I am going to move around <clears throat> excuse me again some of my pieces possibly or I can just leave them this one I decide pretty much to just sort of go ahead and leave them so now I'm going to save it I'm going to save it to the cloud not to my iPhone because they use up space and I want it to go to my Cricut um, design space community profile here so that others are able to use it so you'll see I'm simply naming it ice cream featuring the close to my heart art booking cartridge. I usually try to make sure I put that it's a close to my heart cartridge inside the title somewhere so that uh, those that like my designs will know ahead of time if they need that special cartridge since those items are not available under Cricut Access. You do actually have to have the cartridge or the digital cartridge to be able to use them. So of course here I am just naming it and I'm going to save it. And like I said, I'll save it to the cloud, which automatically puts it in my projects. So here it is saving and it goes there and it says save. So you know it's there. Well, while I'm at it, I also need to do a screenshot. That's what that flash was. So, you know, to screenshot, I need to have it. So if I go to my view profile, which shows you all the lovely projects I have, you'll notice that one is not there yet. And the reason why is while I have saved it to my projects, I have not shared it. So in order to share it, I'm gonna go to um, projects in the cloud. You'll see that screen was there. I need to get the photo first. So I'm going to photo. I'm going to edit and trim down that photo of the screenshot I did. So you'll see I'm just simply resizing and cropping. Um, nothing to uh, involve this. If you've resized photos before, this is simple, same process. And I'm gonna resave it. And once I have it resaved, I'm gonna go back over to Cricut Design Space. I'm gonna open back up my project details page. I'm gonna select the photo because you have to have a one, at least two photos, the one from the canvas view and from a photo you've taken. And I'm simply going to put a brief description. The description doesn't have to be too long. On here, the max is 500 characters, just like your title is uh, 50. And you'll see I'm right um, at that 50 mark. So, you know, you have to be careful and, and think of your wording. And so I have visible to others already open. I have my two photos and I have my title, <clears throat> excuse me, and my description. So now I'm simply gonna save. It gives me the option to save to Facebook, but in this instance, I decided not to. So now I'm gonna go back to view profile, and if I scroll down, now you see that ice cream one is there now, and it has been saved. Now the great thing about this is you can see what cartridges I use. So you see they all came from Art Booking in the basic shape, and you can also click on my name and see all of my shared items as well. Um, so I hope that this video was helpful. I wanted to make sure that I showed you how to create this on your iPhone. And if you have any questions, please ask. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.